Hello everybody. It's Friday and I'm working on your start here video for the week in our Read 180, Read 1802 class. And as you know, last week we kind of made a change. After reading articles for three weeks in a row, we did some things with our vocabulary on our word challenge page and then we uh, worked on some grammar where we were fixing some sentence fragments and we focused a little on capitalization. So that was last week. And those things were to help prepare us and get us ready for a writing assignment that we are going to be working on. So as we go through, I am on week of October 5th through 9th. That'll be next week. And the first thing you have, of course, will be the start here where I will post this video. The next thing that we are doing is a bell ringer, okay, that you are going to be doing. This is in your Google Slides, so keep in mind, you open Google, you go to Waffle, you go to Slides, you will open your digital binder. Okay, digital binder. And as we wait, it will upload. All work has been in pretty much this digital binder here. So remember, we're talking bell ringers. Bell ringers are at the beginning. So that was our practice. There was from the second week of school, September 7th. That's also from September 7th. Here's the one for September 14th. Here's September 28th. This was a little, this is this week. Sorry, I was jumping ahead. Okay, so define December, uh, September. We're not December, we're not September. We're October, October 5th through October 9th. Here we are, okay? Define narrative writing. That is one of the things that we're going to do. Seven, what is an introductory statement? These are going to come from our first page that we will be working on today in our workbook. List five examples of transition words when writing. This is eight. Okay. And we will be looking at some of those. Nine, what are sensory details? Give me two examples. And what is a conclusion? These are all things that we will talk about in the assignments that we are working on for this week. So we have looked at those. All right. Let's go back now. So that's our bell ringers for the week. We will be working on narrative writing. Specifically, we are going to work on a personal narrative. Personal narrative is where we tell a story about something real that happened to us, an experience. A just narrative in general is a story. A narrative can be anything that's made up, but a personal narrative meaning it is something that you experienced that happened to you. And that's what we will be writing this week. If you actually think about it, last week when we did our grammar page, we read a student model and it was about somebody who was telling about being in a car wreck and going to a hospital and missing school. And that is exactly what you will be doing. You're going to be doing a personal narrative like that, something that you experienced. Now, in order to plan for this, you're going to go into your workbook or the scanned copy and go to page 48. I have already opened that, so I am here. Page 48, narrative paragraph. And we're going to read through, and what you're going to be doing is answering these here on the side that you can see, right? So, writing text type is narrative paragraph. This top says, a narrative paragraph tells a story about real or imagined events or experiences. Read Diego Rodriguez's narrative paragraph about when he had the chicken pox. So, we're going to read this, then we'll come back to answer. Student model, a pox on my party by Diego Rodriguez. When I was 14, I caught the chicken pox, which made me worry that I would have to cancel my birthday plans. First, I noticed the scarlet spots in the mirror, but thought they were just a little acne. That was embarrassing enough because my birthday party was in two weeks. By the next day, the spots had spread. The itchy bumps covered my body and made my skin feel like it was on fire. 
I raced to the doctor and learned that I had the chicken pox. The whole next week, I worried at home. Would I have to cancel my party? Would I start a chicken pox epidemic among my best friends? After two weeks, I returned to the doctor. She said I was no longer contagious, and I felt a huge weight lifted off my shoulders. In the end, I had a marvelous birthday party, spot free. So that is our story by Diego, his personal narrative. Now we're going to come over here and look at each of the boxes. Introductory paragraph, a statement. An introductory statement identifies the topic of the narrative and engages the reader by establishing a point of view. Underline the introductory statement. So introductory means it's going to be here when we're looking at things in the beginning, right? So what is it we are talking about? Well, when we look at the beginning, right, we have a when I was 14, I caught the chicken pox, which made me worry that I would have to cancel my birthday plans, right? That tells us what we're going to talk about. Uh, he's telling us when he caught the chicken pox, he told us his age and he told us what was his concern? Why was it important? And that is because he might have to lose uh, the ability to have his party, not have to cancel. So when we underline, this is what the sentence we're looking for. Box two, detail sentences describe events or experiences in time order. Number the events one through five in time order, meaning you're going to go through here and where is the first thing that happened? What happened after that? Then what did they do? What happened again? And hit finally. So if we go through, transition words are a wonderful thing. They really help us figure that out. And we have right here. First, first, I noticed. So that's probably the first thing that happened. Then we keep moving and we have by the next day here in the middle. Well, that's time order. That's showing us, right, that we are moving through order of events. So by the next day, after that, what did we do? We raced. He says, I raced to the doctor. That's what happened. After going to the doctor the whole next week, what did we do? We worried. And then finally, after two weeks, returned to the doctor and was told it would be fine and we could have, we were no longer contagious and could have our party. That would be where we number. That's the five. Now, the next section in this box talks about sensory details. Sensory details bring to life the setting, events, and people or characters. Check three sensory details, okay? So things that help us, and we're going to put a check by those, right? Sensory details. So noticing scarlet spots is probably a really good. How about when we describe them as itchy bumps, right? And made our skin feel like it was on fire. That was good sensory details, right? And then how about at the end when he says here, when I was no longer contagious, what I felt a huge weight lifted off my shoulders. That would be not something that really happened. He wasn't carrying weights around, but because of the emotional release, he felt that. And that is a great descriptive, again, sensory detail, descriptive phrase for us. So we put checks beside those. This box talks about transition words and phrases connect to help connect details. Four says to circle five transition words or phrases. So first is a word, we used that one earlier, that might help, but by the next day is a phrase, as an example. Go circle those, okay, as you go through. The writer also uses vivid adjectives. Vivid adjectives are ways to describe the experience in a lively way. It helps us to see it better or hear something or smell it or taste it. So in this case, we're seeing, right? And we're supposed to double underline some of those. I remember mentioning the word earlier, like scarlet. That would be a great example of some things, right? And itchy might be a really good thing that we could look at. And how about even down here, a marvelous birthday party? That could be an example. The concluding sentence completes the narrative in a satisfying way. It ends the story kind of letting us know what happened or leaving it with a sense of expectation. And you're to put a star beside the concluding sentence, okay?
So that is what we are doing here for this particular paragraph uh, assignment that you will be working on. Now let's go back into Google Classroom. Okay, I will be shutting that. After we've done that and, you know, looking at it, you're going to be working on brainstorming. Does everybody remember what brainstorming is? Brainstorming is that place where you throw out ideas that you might use. And nothing is silly, nothing is too stupid, nothing is too crazy. Any idea is acceptable. And in actuality, this is one of those things that we use, not just in school, but out of school. We use it in the business world. We use it in almost any area. When they have a problem, one of the things they do is take the time to brainstorm. Well, in this case, we're brainstorming for a, a writing prompt. And our writing prompt is going to be, tell about a time when you had to miss school or an important event. And you have here this Google drawing. Okay. Read the writing prompt in the middle of the idea web, then use the boxes to help you brainstorm. Okay. Writing prompt, write a narrative that tells about a time when you had to miss school or an important event. All right. And mine may look a little different. Yours might do this way, might not, but you just open this up and there's your text box. Each of these is a text box. So they give you some examples to write about. Did you have any illnesses that might would have been a time when you had to miss school or an important event? Have you had injuries? Notice that's different from illnesses, injuries that had made you miss school or an important event, something you really wanted to do and were no longer able to do it. What about any accidents? Have you had accidents that somehow made you miss school or an important event? And last visits like a trip, right? where you had to go see somebody or to the hospital, maybe even to a funeral. But did you have to miss school or some important event because of that? So this is to help you get organized there. That will be for your brainstorming activity. Once you have finished the brainstorming, you have a question. Your question is real simple. Which of the events from your brainstorming activity do you wish to write about? And so you're going to tell me which one you're going to use. Okay. And then last, we're going to organize our ideas for writing. And I have given you a Google Doc where you're going to organize. You can actually find this in your workbook. The brainstorming activities in your workbook on page 49 and this organizing your writing is coming kind of off of page 50. And so there's a place for you to fill in your name, your class name, your teacher's name, the date, complete this outline with notes for, for your writing, introductory statement parts. What is your topic? What are you writing about? What is your point of view, right? This is where you're coming from. So think back to Diego. Diego was going to write about getting chicken pox, but his point of view was the fear that he wasn't going to get to have his party from it. Okay. His feelings about that. So it is him personally telling us this story and how he felt. Then detail sentences list three sensory details about the event or experience. And you may have more, you can add to this, but give things specific that you could describe, like how he told us what they looked like and how it, felt and you know when you talked about the, them itching and being on fire and so what details can you tell us that might be in your story then you'll have a concluding sentence where you're going to sum up and tell us kind of a this is what finally happened you'll create a title and then here's a frame to help you a sentence frame when i was you can tell me an age blank so this happened and right it probably should say I and I could not what or you don't need I occasionally we don't need it so I'm going to put it in parentheses depending how you say it but you're going to tell me on a time when you could not do something all right there you go so that is how you're going to organize your writing and that is our whole thing this week we are preparing to write Next week, we will be writing a rough draft and then completing this. We're going to be doing it through No Red Ink, and you're going to work on this paper next week. Your personal narrative about a store, a time where you tell us the story of you having to miss school or an important event you really wanted to go to because of something. All right. 
Okay, uh, I'm still waiting to hear on the Read 180 software. I'm hoping maybe this week, five days was kind of last week, so maybe this crosses over this week and we get it. As soon as we get that, we're going to kind of have a stop and this is how we do this session. Um, and we will learn how to get logged in and we will use it and this will become an important piece of our everyday work. We won't have as much of some of this other writing and reading. We'll do it, but it won't be as much of it on any given week because of that, because we will be getting this done. All right. Hope everybody has a great weekend. Remember, if you have any questions, you can always check in with us on Fridays. We're doing that live Google Meet at 1 o'clock that you can jump in to ask a question. So we'll have one today. You can email some of you who signed up with us with text. You can text. You have Remind. You can send a note. So just let us know, everybody. All right. All righty. I'm going to close this out now. Bye.